my steering wheel, it actually has finger holes. So I can drive this thing with my pinkies if I want to. It fits absolutely perfect. If I get in an accident, my pinkies will be ripped off in an instant, but uh, still illustrating my point here. Welcome to Hoobies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my 1966 Ford Mustang Fastback GT350 Tribute. I'm not sure what makes it a tribute other than putting the stickers on like everybody does because most of it is totally different from the original Shelby Mustang. Now, I bought this. I didn't build this. I bought this from somebody who built it in their home garage. They even painted it themselves, did a pretty good job. Uh, but under the hood is a 5-liter supercharged V8 from a 1993 Ford Mustang, but it's been hopped up. So not original there, but, but a Mustang engine. It has upgraded brakes, upgraded suspension. The interior is thoroughly modernized. But driving it was a very old-school muscle car man experience because it had no power steering, no power brakes, and I'm sure you all thought I looked macho when I drove this thing around. So maybe not, but now it has a little secret. And the little secret inside of this Mustang is apparently what's going to be the future of all Mustangs. But let me let me show you this thing. I've had it for a year now. I am so fortunate to have this car, and every time I go out in the garage and look at it, I just can't believe I own an American icon like this. I bought it for $31 thousand dollars. This was right when things were getting a little iffy with the uh, pandemic and car prices were really low. And now, as we all know, they've shot up to where pretty much everything's impossible to buy now for a reasonable price. So I could easily sell this thing for a profit, but I won't. Just, just look at this thing. <laughs> what a shape with that fastback rear body. The guy completely restored it in his garage himself. He actually chose a Mopar green paint job, which uh, I wouldn't have picked. But now that I see it on the car, I think it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. The wheels are certainly aftermarket. And the interior, well, it's all new on the inside. Definitely period. Now, I've made some touches now over the last year ownership, starting with this wood steering wheel. I wanted to look more like a Shelby. I'm also a Shelby poser with the gas cap now. I've got the GT350 snake cap on there, but uh, other than that, a very stock looking Mustang interior. He lost the back seat for a thump and stereo system, which is hiding under here, and he created his own center console system, but uh, everything else other than the tachometer. Very, very stock in here, and very, very comfortable. Now, Mustangs have certainly had a renaissance in recent years with performance, incredible cars. We now have a Shelby GT500 that makes over 700 horsepower. It's insanely fast and every kind of performance variant there is is coming out right now. Mustang is really hot when it comes to internal combustion performance engines, but apparently all that's going to change. It's rumored that Ford is going to shift all of Mustang to electric completely by the end of the decade. No more V8 Mustangs, no more V6 rental Mustangs, all electric. They're getting our feet wet with the Mustang Mach-E, which is a Mustang Mach-E that nobody asked for, but now that I've seen it, I'm not that offended by it. And honestly, I'm not offended at all by Mustang's rumored plans to go all electric in the future. I think, well, it's probably the only way to go, which I'll try to explain today as we drive this back home from the Wizards and check out another Mustang, which is pretty much at the top of the mountain in performance. But before we go, let me show you under the hood of mine because it's just neat. Look at that Kenny Bell supercharger. Fresh oil change. It's just so much fun that I don't want to change a thing with this engine, but I did change one thing that makes this thing resemble a lot more like the Mustangs of the future. So I've completely transformed the driving experience of this car because, well, I just wasn't manly enough to own it. These, these arms just weren't girthy enough uh, to deal with the manual steering in this thing. But now, no problem at all. Why is that? Well, I now have electric power steering like a Prius, like many vehicles are going away from hydraulic power steering to electric. And let me tell you, it feels fantastic. The whole system cost about two grand, which is uh, completely worth it. And I can turn it off at a flick of the button if I want to have the old school experience, but I don't know why I would. You merge effortlessly. Oh yeah. But I still have my Mustang V8 burble. <laughs> I still look manly, but now I can drive it with my pinky. So now this Mustang's a lot more usable for me, and I don't feel bad for one second that I've introduced some foreign electronic thingy under here that basically grabs the steering shaft with an electric motor and helps me turn the wheel. The Wizard actually had to mill the steering shaft, which was circular. He milled a notch in it so this thing can grab and twist the wheel for me with the, the minimum of inputs. And my steering wheel it actually has finger holes, so I can drive this thing with my pinkies if I want to. 
it fits absolutely perfect. If I get in an accident, my pinkies will be ripped off in an instance, but uh, it's illustrating my point here. Yeah, quit doing that. Uh, so anyway, when I bought this thing, the uh, owner who built this car said it was putting out about uh, mid 300s to the wheels, which to me is plenty. Any more than that in this car would seem really, really dangerous to me. Uh, but nowadays, modern Mustangs are putting out twice the horsepower and I've never experienced what a Mustang is like with 700 plus horsepower before, but there is one available at a dealership nearby. And they said that I'm welcome to try it out. Oh, look how easy it is to steer. Oh, this is great. <laughs> plenty, plenty of power. <laughs> as, as I almost mate with a Kia Sedona in front of me. Plenty. That was a great decision. This Mustang is an absolute joy to drive now, much more civilized and fun. But now we're going to experience this. This is a 2018 Ford Mustang GT, which wouldn't be all that special, except you see, well, the, the Roush stuff on the side and on the windshield. This is a Roush jackhammer, which means uh, Roush performance goes through and does all the performance goodies on the Mustang GT, including a giant supercharger, which puts this thing up to 700 and 10 horsepower, 710 horsepower. They also do suspension mods, bracing mods. I think they upgrade the brakes as well. Yes, Brembo brakes. So spec wise, this is around the same as the GT500 Mustang, but it is way, way less. I think a new GT500 is somewhere over $100,000 if you can get one. This one's a little bit used, 2018, same horsepower, and it's $55,000 here at Walzer. So quite a bargain from that perspective, but also I think this is going to be the way more reliable vehicle. The GT350's engines have a tendency to explode in the GT500's. I noticed some have been delivered with the uh, knocking engines. They're still too new, so the jury's out, but the Coyote engine has been proven as a pretty solid citizen, even when it's turned up to the max like this. And really, this is the top of the mountain when it comes to Mustangs currently and maybe forever. All right, push button start, which is way too close to the volume knob, but uh, ergonomically, this car is way better than a 66 Mustang. I love the old school aircraft style switches. This is a great retro tribute to the 60s Mustang without being too over the top like previous generations of Mustangs, but uh, let's see what double the horsepower is all about. So far, just putting around the parking lot is pretty unassuming, and for a car like the Jackhammer, it's not really jackhammering me around. But these cars do have electronically controlled dampening to alter the suspension, so it makes sense why this thing rides so nice. But here we go. Let's see what happens when this boost gauge goes up. God. Okie dokie. <laughs> well, when it's not fighting for traction, uh, the power is unbelievable. Get to the highway here in a little bit, so I'm not being too dangerous here. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. More power than you would ever need. And the value on the Roushes, I always think, are good, especially when they're a little bit used. Like I said earlier, the, the Shelbys seem to be so much more fragile engine-wise. And they hold their value so much better, so used is not that good of a buy as well. So if I were shopping for one, it would be a already built up Roush like this, or I would buy a bullet Mustang and throw a supercharger on it and make it well, just as fast as one of these. Well, the Roush, all their packaging is really nice, and it does come with the full factory warranty because it's authorized versus you hacking it up yourself. So it makes a lot of sense to get one of these. And man, is this car a nice place to be. Mustang has always done a good job with the seats. I always think the seats are so comfortable in any generation of Mustang. And there's still plenty potent on the track. Finally, an on-ramp. Come on, traction. Jeez. Okie dokie. This time I tried to mate a Mustang with a Hyundai Elantra, but uh, as I've said with fast cars before, it's really hard to experience all their performance capabilities legally on public roads. And that's why I like older cars, slower cars that make all the noise. They let you run through all of the gears without speeds that would send you directly to jail. But unlike my old McLaren or a lot of other modern supercars with this kind of horsepower, it doesn't feel like you're driving a video game. It doesn't feel really detached and almost boring. This thing still has the old Mustang burble on the look and feel, and I still feel cool driving this thing. Maybe a little bit cooler in my 66, but still cool in this car. But every time I got on the gas with this 710 horsepower machine, you saw the car is fighting for traction. We're at the limit of what tires can do, what a differential can do, what a, what a transmission can do uh, without drag slicks, without some serious heavy duty stuff that would make the car undrivable in 
any other situation other than down a drag strip. So where could Mustang go from here with the internal combustion engine? And well, honestly, it's not that much further. There's no way Mustang can keep going with the horsepower. They've gone from 300 to 400 to 500 to 700, and, and they're not gonna keep going. They're not gonna be an 800 horsepower, a thousand horsepower V8 Mustang. That would just be absolutely suicidal. It'd be a lawsuit waiting to happen. So really what we have right here is the top of the mountain when it comes to the internal combustion engine. As they make these cars conform to emissions restrictions and fuel economy standards, the engines just get so complicated that it's, it's really not worth it anymore. The cars, well, they just aren't built to last. And electric cars, well, they're much simpler and they're much more efficient at delivering power. So it, it just makes sense for us to move on. So that is very, very fun and very scary. I wouldn't want to own a car with uh, uh, one more horsepower than that. And really, this is the limits of what we've reached with the internal combustion engine. You have an inefficient transmission. You have an inefficient way of delivering the power with differentials and all that stuff. And even with all the computers you can throw at it, electronic diffs and all that stuff, you can still only control this kind of horsepower so much. With electric cars, you can have tri-motors. You can have four motors powering different wheels. And you can control the power so much more. It's instantaneous. It's so much faster. And that's why going electric makes sense. We've already seen everything that the internal combustion engine can do, so why not see what Mustang can do with electric cars? I mean, it's just inevitable. Yes, we'll miss the noise of these incredible cars and superchargers and the exhausts and all that stuff, but performance-wise, a Model S Plaid, a Taycan Turbo S can blow the doors off of any internal combustion car any day of the week. So it's just time to face reality and realize that these these are old dinosaurs. And it's not like we'll run out of internal combustion Mustangs. These cars will still be everywhere. There's still tens of thousands of these 60s Mustangs on the road, and I'm sure there'll be tens of thousands of these lasting forever, especially when they are the last of the breed. So this old school car guy isn't salty on new electric cars, and really, you shouldn't be either. It's not like you're gonna buy a new one of these anyway. You're gonna buy them used and crusty like I normally do. Thank you for watching.